Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I just got an idea. Now, I hardly ever do this, so y'all bear with me. This is my book called It's Backwards. That still blows my mind. I'm reading from the first two paragraphs of Desperation on a Quest. These are chapter by chapter. It's, it's a, an anthology of experiences with me and God. This is a book I wrote a couple of years ago. Listen, I was tired, tired of being an apology and tired of playing a role. I was choking on the aftertaste of too much street life and losing all interest in endless servings of bull. For too long, I had been stuck at a crossroad, caught between two opinions, neither here nor there. I was just aimlessly meandering through a life of quiet desperation and emotional neediness. I stumbled into a maze and got lost in space. Then I couldn't find my way, so I just sat there, wallowing in my own pity. Soon, time brought me a rude awakening. I had become an emotional cripple. My only response to that was to keep on spinning my wheels. I was going nowhere but down into a pit of disillusionment where I kept looking for love and dead end relationships. Now, my question to you is what are you looking for? What are you looking for and what are you so desperate for? Do you know the only one that can satisfy you with his love is God? The only one that can fill you with satisfaction is God. No man, no woman can do that for you. They may add the cherry on top or the icing on the cake, but trust me, God is the only one that has that package that you really need the way you need it packaged. So when you look at a human being, I know women right now, I know some men, they do the same thing. They look at their mate, at their, at their husband or wife, and they're looking at them like, something's wrong. Why aren't you making me happy? What's wrong with you? You don't want to be with me or something? Okay. Well, I noticed that I, I want to do things and you Okay. First of all, here's the biggest problem. Your focus, this is where your focus is. Your focus is on me. You're staring at you. Everything about life has to do with you, with your needs. Not anyone else's, yours. Because you are so important after all. Now, when you start to put a strain on the relationship in your mind where those crazy marble thoughts are, you start blaming the other person for falling short. Don't you? It's not them falling short. Be honest. Something's missing in here. There's a hole in your soul. And you're waiting for them to fill it. And if they don't fill it soon enough, you're ready to get your heels to clicking. Because you got to find the right soulmate. Let me tell you something. There's only one soulmate. That's God. Everybody else, you better pray on it. So it can be a marriage made in heaven, but you could turn it into a marriage made in hell. By the time you get through dealing with your needs, your emotions, your insecurities, your fears, let me share something with you. It came back to my mind, and I'm going to share it. One of my family members was waiting for her husband to come in the door. She was ready to pounce. She was like a, an angry cat. Okay. Now this 
man had been working all day and all night. He was a movie man. And he took her and her teenage kids and took care of them all, all by himself. So she was a stay-at-home mom for years till she just decided to get a job. But listen to this. She was so insecure. I watched her. I was standing in the kitchen. This woman was so insecure. She's looking at the front door with a hand on her waist, waiting for the door to open. She hears the, the key. This man walks in the door, dirty from handling furniture all day long. Hard work. She looks at him, and this is how she greets him at the door. Does this sound familiar, ladies? Now, I'm not going to say the word because I stay away from cuss words as much as I can. She says this. What B-I-T-C-H you been effing this time? I was blinking. I was like, what? Where did that come from? Insecurities. She wasn't happy with her looks. Ergo, she assumed and supposed he wasn't either. She was insecure afraid and jealous there was nobody to be jealous of but in her mind if he's too busy and he's too tired to be there for me and give me all the attention i need he's got to have another woman how many marriages are ruined based on smoke screens, back to the marbles, rolling around in the head, driving you down that mud pit. She didn't get driven into the mud pit. She dove head first into it. I, what, I couldn't believe she attacked him. The man was obviously exhausted. All he wanted to do was get to the bathroom. And she's on him. Nah, 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 nah. He said, you better get away from me before I hurt you. Just shut up. I mean, I couldn't blame him for saying that. And every day, he's getting up early in the morning. Right? Yeah. Bringing home the bacon. So she and her children can eat. She had one child by him who she was also jealous of because he happened to love his daughter. We don't realize. I've seen men. I, I know a woman who was married to a man. I'm telling you how imaginations can turn into paranoia. Paranoia can turn into this monster. Now, this one woman was married to a man. They both went to church. Not all born-again Christians are equally yoked. This man was extremely ignorant. He had a mental block. There was no reasoning in his database things just did not compute so if things did not compute something had to be wrong with you not me so uh, this woman got to the point she would be talking to her family members and she would get off the phone when she heard him pulling up and I started asking her I said is this guy hitting you no, it's just that he's so insecure. He thinks if you and I or me and mama or me and so-and-so are laughing, he'll think we're laughing at him. And an argument ensues over nothing. How many times can people sit and talk and laugh and have a ball that 
have that relationship. They have a laughing, jovial relationship. And because somebody is insecure, they sour the whole atmosphere. You're laughing at me. I know you're laughing at me. I heard my name. I know I heard my name. Don't lie to me. I mean, a nice, simple situation can turn so ugly. In some cases, if the person has a volatile temper, it can turn deadly. Because the imagination, all that popcorn I talked about, is popping all over the place and it's out of control. Making a mess of everything. Making a mess of every relationship. Of every opportunity. Everything gets messed up. Because of all the popcorn popping off in your head. We have got to pray that God help keep our minds stayed on him so that he can keep us in perfect peace, which the Bible promises for keeping our minds stayed on him. Not on our fears. Chuck the fears, baby. They are toxic. Embrace the love of God and ask God to enable you to trust another's love for you. Or else you will end up being old, grumpy, mean, and alone. Think about them apples. God bless you.